<laughs> yes, the next one. Our ancestors in Africa, they were looking for the berry bush. They were looking for the berry bushes. <laughs> Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, before we start the video, just a quick update. Subscribestar finally has launched my page after two weeks of review. So guys, if you want to support this channel, head over to Subscribestar. Once you join in, you receive a comprehensive nutrition guide, which will be adjustable for your personal goals. This guide will let you adjust all the macro micronutrients to your liking. And it does not matter if you're carnivore, keto, primal or paleo. On top of that, you get instant access to our Reclaim Your Health Discord community. No guys, this is not a totally new server for the old members, don't worry, this is a specific channel. Here we can connect 24-7 and this is crucial because we will have exclusive private Skype group meetups once per week. Therefore, we have to stay in touch and get the dates right. In the beginning, it will be a small group of two to three people where we can discuss anything, no matter if it is nutrition related or lifestyle or whatnot. So if that is something that you are interested in and you want to support Bobby's perspective, head over to Subscribestar now. The links are in the description box. All right, enough of that. Now we're going to react to Simnet Nutrition interviewing Dr. Klepper. Let's do it. Welcome to part two of my interview with Dr. Michael Clapper. If you have not seen the first part of the interview, definitely go check that out first. There's so much cool information in that. But in this one, we talk about vitamin K2, bone density, high fat, Always high this fat, fake fat, enthusiasm. Diet, ketogenic diet, talk about omega Super cheerful. High protein bean pasta, fasting, and a whole bunch more. As I mentioned wow. in part one, the audio is not the best. I did what I could with the equipment I had there and in post-production here at home, but mm -hmm. it's the information that is important, so please just overlook any sort of ambient noise. <laughs> fake chuckle. It's always this fake positivity, fake enthusiasm. If you have a intact bullshit meter, you will understand that this here is acted. This is not genuine. I know many genuinely positive people, and this is not how they behave. Uh, and just listen to the amazing information that he so kindly is providing with us. So you mentioned <laughs> that he is so kindly providing with us, the supreme leader. Let's listen to him. Protein uh, is the, <laughs> you know, the protein quality and the amino acids that we get from plant foods superior or inferior to that of animal meat and animal products. Okay, before the supreme leader answers here. Why is that even a question, Derek? Why is that even a question? This is something that is very well established in the scientific community. We all know that plant proteins have a lower bioavailability than meat proteins. That is well known. So why is that so? Because plants contain a lot of fiber, right? All of that protein that you would find in plants is wrapped in fiber and therefore almost not accessible for human beings. Why? Because we are not ruminant animals. We cannot ferment that fiber and therefore the biological value is lower and therefore this question is obsolete. Of course it's sufficient. And at the <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> here, uh, ask any racehorse. Ask any yes. Um, if the amino acids they're eating... Uh, yeah, buddy. He plays the vegan card of, hey, we can do it just like the buffaloes, right? Just like the racehorse, the strongest land animals. They are gorillas, elephants, herbivores, right? Absolutely ridiculous. As I said, we are not ruminant animals. Therefore, we do not possess guts that do ferment the fiber, right? We're very, very small gut, very similar to dogs, cats. We are carnivores. This example makes no sense. Actual grains and grasses are consuming. Um, are sufficient to make strong animals. Yes, because those animals are herbivores. And on top of that, those animals don't have to work out either, right? So, wait a second. I want to build a muscular body. Don't worry about it, because herbivores have muscles. You do not need to go to the gym. 
That is your logic. Ridiculous. Quagmire. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the amino acids don't know where they are. <laughs> no idea where I am. <laughs> I thought I belonged in a cow, but now I'm in a vegan. <laughs> Uh, so absolutely, eat enough calories, you're going to get enough amino acids, and again, uh, I've never written... Same, right? You did it wrong. As long as you eat enough calories, you're going to get enough amino acids. And this is why our beloved Dr. Klepper sits there with his little insulin belly over his belt. The diagnosis of amino acid deficiency from inability to absorb from plant food. Right. That no, doesn't happen. So, not to worry. Uh, all the that doesn't happen because 85% of people drop out of veganism because they cannot cope with the malnourishment. Simple as that. I really agree. <laughs> um, perfect. So I often post what I eat in a day videos, and uh, I, I, you know, I love doing them. And a lot Please of stop. what I'll do is I'll plug all the information into a chronometer, and uh, yeah. you know, we go over at the end. Again, it is always the same. This is nothing new. I plug the information into chronometer. Yes, I agree. In those plants, you will find proteins. The question is not if those plants contain the nutrients, but can you absorb them? That is the question. If I take a rock and I put it into chronometer, it will show me a high mineral density. Can I absorb them? That is the question. The sort of, you know, if I've hit all my RDIs. And no surprise, most of the time I hit 100% of my RDIs. Uh, but I'm always met <laughs> with the argument or the comment, yeah, but what about absorption? You're not absorbing yes. all of that. Yes, thank you. So what do you have to say to that? And again, a couple things about these recommended daily intakes, the RDIs. One, um, they are purposely engineered. The number they come up with I agree. is enough to assure nutritional superabundance. In apparent, in basically every Not necessarily. I would actually beg the differ. I would argue for the exact opposite. The protein quantities that are recommended are too low. Every human being walking the earth. Uh, so they've built in this uh, a large margin uh, just uh, for to make sure there's nutritional adequacy. Right. But also, they know very well that not every atom of selenium gets absorbed, and so they also factor in uh, into that number the amount of nutrients that naturally is not going to get absorbed. That doesn't make sense. If you look into the recommendation of protein, it's too low as it is, right? And now if we say a grown man should eat only 60 grams of protein, and then we take vegetable protein, where pretty much 70% gets excreted anyways, what is left? Right, you're going to be left with five to ten grams of protein for your day. That is, of course, ridiculous. So that's yeah. already in the uh, in the. RBI no, it's not. There. So again, it's, it's nothing to uh, to stress about. Right. And again, these are nothing to stress about. Eat enough calories. Just because you only got ninety-five percent uh, of cobalt, believe me, you're, you're exceeded what your body really needs. Mm. Yeah, that surplus mm. has been built into the numbers. Sure. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, so if you say so, dear Supreme Leader, then I will obey. I will execute what you command. Vitamin K2. This is, uh, you know, it's a bit of, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's a hot topic. No, but it's no. sort of come into light recently. And uh, mm. it's one of the arguments against veganism that, you know, of course we can eat natter uh, for K2. But other than that, there are not many sources of, of K2 in the, uh, in the vegan diet. That is a good question, Derek. K2, yes, there is this food called natto, which is fermented soybeans, and it allegedly has high amounts of K2. Yes, the plant version. It doesn't have the animal version, which is MK4. I was an avid natto eater, right? When I was a vegan, I was eating two to three packs of natto every single day. However, I still suffered from dental deterioration. So how is that related to K2, you might ask? For calcium to end up in your teeth, you will need K2 and you will need vitamin D3. Both things are not available in the vegan diet. And this is why we see so many people suffering from bad dental hygiene. Uh, so K1 versus K2. Is K2 something that we have to be seeking out actively? Do we it's not only K1 versus K2, it is K2 versus the animal K2, which is MK4. You have to be wolfing down from natto in order to be healthy and have yeah. strong bones, or, or is vitamin K sufficient? Absolutely not. And absolutely not. No matter what you ask, it will always be absolutely not. Building strong bones. Mm. 
but the amount of osteoporosis yes. we're seeing now is skyrocketing due to our sedentary lifestyle, not through vitamin K deficiency. Throughout <laughs> history, as people are working every day, their bones stayed strong throughout their entire life. Sure. And vitamin K deficiency wasn't an issue as long as they're eating enough dark green vegetables. What? He did it. He played vegan card number two, dark green leafy vegetables. Do you really believe that people back in the day that admittedly were more active ate dark green leafy vegetables? They were eating meats, organs. Nobody was eating leafy green vegetables back in the day in the wild. Oh yeah, let me get a spinach salad today for lunch. What the hell? Um, to make a long story short, when you eat uh, Please. green leafy vegetables, you're going to be getting the precursors of vitamin K, a uh, very important <laughs> vitamin for blood coagulation, etc. Mm. But once you're eating this kind of diet and you spawn microbes that are, are uh, used to digesting plant foods, uh, you, you call forth a strain of microbes that will take the vitamin K1 molecule and turn it into vitamin K2 for you. It's so like magic. Vitamin K2 that you mm. need is really... Yeah, as a vegan, you can convert anything, right? You do not need cholesterol, you make your own, you do not need really high bioavailability in proteins either, right? You can combine rice with beans, and now you make K2 out of K1. Fantastic. Produced by the vegan magic. Assuming you're eating a regular helping of dark green vegetables, you pretty much... It's the dark greens. <laughs> Sure. Something dark and green on your you face. need the oxalate leaves. You need them, otherwise you can't be healthy. In, in substantial amount, kale, chard, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, etc. Dr. Esselstyn runs the list there. <laughs> yeah, you you want a, a good helping of that. Yeah. And if you do that on a daily basis, the microbes you're going to spawn will create the vitamin K. Done. Maybe. Done. Brush it off. And, um, osteoporosis <laughs> and, you know, I've talked to a lot of people that have been drinking uh. milk all their life right and they come into adulthood and they find that they have osteoporosis they have low bone density uh, and we had a couple of questions on our facebook group where people asked is this reversible can you uh can you gain bone density back yeah. so first and foremost why do they have low bone density right just because they've been drinking milk that should have fixed it what is the argument here everybody nowadays especially in canada is drinking pasteurized milk and that is of course not healthy we're not talking about processed shit foods we're talking about raw milk in the carnivore community and then you would get enough calcium enough minerals absolutely thank you such an important question thank you and i'll go into the answer but i'll remind your viewers if this you go sad. to my website, drclapper.com, D-O-C-T-O-R-K-L-A-P-E-R.com, no. click on webinars, you'll see a webinar there mm. called Healthy Bones, mm. and called How to Reverse Osteoporosis, and I deal with all this in detail in my video, Healthy Bones, on my website. Fantastic. That's it. Uh, what you just said is such a beautiful example of how the dairy industry has mm. been masterful in convincing humans uh, in the West that... <sighs> Drinking the milk of a cow equals strong bones. They've been great at convincing us that pasteurized milk is healthy. That's all. And it obviously is not true for many reasons, but the proof of it is in your statement. I, right. I were drinking milk all my life, and I still got osteoporosis. <laughs> yeah. That's because drinking milk will not prevent osteoporosis. Uh, yeah. Osteoporosis is not a disease of calcium deficiency. It's not a disease of cow's milk deficiency. Uh, we've become... Not calcium deficiency? What? Sedentary. We used to spend our days active out gathering wood, lifting bales of hay, working yeah. in the garden, heavy tools. And every time you do something physically, and you, as you know well, mm -hmm. you stress the bones, and the micro stresses of the bones are what makes the bone producing cells, the osteoblasts, spin out new bone. It's just like your muscles. You use them, and then the muscle cells get bigger. Yeah. Yes, great example. It's micro trauma, so to speak. Therefore, those bones have to get thicker but they do need building materials. Sorry to disappoint you. I know vegans in the ideal vegan world would be breatharians and nobody would need any building blocks, no food whatsoever. However, here in human realm, yes, when bones and muscles get micro damaged, they need to be rebuilt. So therefore, yes, for your bones, it is calcium, dear Dr. Klepper. And for your muscles, as you said, 
you would need to rebuild them through proteins. The micro trauma is the impulse, then you will need to feed them. It's pretty simple. You start using them in the atrophy. Well, that's what's happening in the bones. Osteoporosis. Yeah, you stop eating protein, they atrophy as well. Your muscles shrink. Is not a calcium deficiency. Osteoporosis is just use Why are we listening to this man? We all day, we sit and we eat, we sit and we travel, we sit and we work, we sit and we watch TV, we sit and we watch the email, we sit and we do interviews. Uh, we, <laughs> sit, we sit, we sit, we sit, and that's why our bones are dissolving. Yeah. Now, the good news is that those bone-producing cells, the osteoblasts, are still in your bones even if you have osteoporosis. So the answer to reversing it is start using your bones. Start, uh, and not eating, right? Just use them. Fast. Don't eat. Okay, so absolutely no nutritional advice. Just use your bones. So what do we eat, Dr. Klepper? Amazing. Um, Amazing. So a lot of <laughs> sure. talk about um, omegas right now uh, in, in the sort of plant-based movement. Oh, as well. Uh, yeah. It's sort of come to light that we might have to incorporate an algae-based DHA uh, EPA supplement. Um, what is your now? What you really should incorporate is animal fats. Thought on that. Can we get enough? Uh, you know, uh, can we get enough ALA from flax, chia, hemp? You know, all the omega three yeah. sources for our body to manufacture enough EPA and DHA, or should we be uh, thinking about supplementing this? Right. That's an important. You should be thinking about throwing those supplements out of the window and you should be thinking about eating animal foods. Important question and I'll try not to get too wonky in the biochemistry here. We're talking about these long chain fatty acids uh, and the one that has the first double bonded carbon atom number three is an omega-3 fatty acid. And your body uses these for your brain health, for your muscles, for your yes. nerves. Uh, and it's important to take in enough, and everybody should have a handful of walnuts every day, uh, a tablespoon or two of ground flax on your oatmeal. Yeah, if you want hormonal disruption, you want phytoestrogens in your diet, yes, then go for the flax seeds. However, you won't find omega-3 fats in plant foods. It is oils. In plant foods, you find only oils, nothing more and nothing less. The chia seeds, these are wonderful, and these dark green leafy veggies have omega-3. <laughs> <So, laughs> yeah, so eat a bowl of salad for good brain function. That makes perfect sense. Who needs fish? Um, and the enough is not to prevent heart disease. Um, we're talking about your brain. Uh, brain yes. A lot of DHA in it. Thank you. And there's been some and where do we find DHA? Hmm. In dark leafy greens. No, in animal foods. Some studies that long-term vegans, as the years go by, if, mm. if they're not consuming enough DHA, they may wind up with... Oh, a really? Atrophy of the brain. Thank you, Dr. Klepper. Finally, someone that admits this. Yes, vegan brains have been examined. And yes, they do have brain shrinkage. By default, if you eat vegan, you become mentally ill. Your brain shrinks. You can see this in scans. Your brain is literally shrinking on a vegan diet. There's been some disturbing reports, and I've had a couple of patients uh, with yes. uh, long-term vegan diets. It's got to be concerned enough. He just admitted it. We're not living like our ancient ancestors who might have been living along the seashores and eating seaweed every day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, vegan card number three. Our ancestors have been eating seaweed. <laughs> oh, dude, do you really believe what you're preaching here? This is insane. Are you rewriting human history? <laughs> what the hell? Our ancestors have been eating fish and animals. They've been pretty much on a carnivorous diet. What would you find in nature? Do you really believe that they <laughs> dive down to the grounds of the ocean and gulp down omega-3 containing algae? That is ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> Huge amounts of greens that they forage. Okay, this is just getting better and better and better. 
What kind of nostalgic romantic vision do you have of our history? Do you believe in some sort of Garden Eden scenario where people ate seaweed and greens from the forest? What the hell is this? How can anybody take this guy serious? Honestly, vegan or not, this is absolute quagmire. Kind of life, and that's why our DHA level might drop down. That's why, not because we've been eating brains. Um, I take a, um, that's crazy. A, a veggie cap of omega-3 of, of DHA, made from algae, not from fish, from algae. Uh, most days of the week, five, seven days a week, I'll, I'll pop in one of these omega-3s. Sure, what else do you pop? So I think it's a good idea to prevent dementia. Would I develop it anyway? Probably, hopefully, probably not, but I just don't want to take the chance. It's kind of an insurance policy, mm -hmm. so that's where I am. Perfect. Yeah, dementia is clearly not a Amazing. specific Perfect. Uh, condition. Perfect. Well, right. Of course not. not vegan. Yeah, no, exactly. No, no. Um, eh. Yeah, but most people are on a plant-based diet. Believe it or not, once I started examining what people truly eat, I was quite shocked. When you become vegan, you think, oh my god, everybody is a flesh eater, a zombie, right? But then you look around and you realize, no, they're eating processed plants. 70% of our diets nowadays is plants. Yeah, they might eat a little bit of breakfast meats in between two buns, right? Processed plants. Everything is wrapped in bread. It is a plant-based diet. This is where you develop dementia. And I don't know if you know this, but will this uh, affect our, our own manufacturing of EPA and DHA from ALA? If we... I don't believe so. Okay. No, there's no real evidence of that. Your enzymes should so be able to handle it. Well, this is a small amount. This is a tiny amount. For right. Just kind of a baseline insurance form. I don't think it's enough to inhibit your own production. I so, believe you. Uh, there's a lot of different camps of uh, sort of a vegan diet, right? You know, there's people that uh, want to eat a completely raw diet. They want to eat, you know, people are trying a high fat. Some even trying a ketogenic. Uh, some do such, you know, just a fruitarian. <laughs> the people that try the ketogenic diet, diet um, they're already on the way to fail. This is what is happening there. They already realize that eating that many carbohydrates can't be healthy. And then the ketogenic vegan diet is the last resort. You know, I don't necessarily want you to touch on any of these in particular unless you want to, but are there any benefits, you know, for us to be trying out these sort of fringes of, of the plant-based eating? Or do you think, like, you know, should we be eating sort of a more balanced, I guess? Is, is right. In general, balance. if you're basically a healthy person, you should be eating a normal, balanced, whole food, plant-based diet. And that would be... No, if you're a healthy, normal human being, you should eat a normal human diet, which of course contains meat. Like, uh, Why would you eat a plant-based diet? Fruit in the morning with a little almond milk on it, say, and lunches and dinners, big glorious salads, hearty vegetable soups, big plates of steamed green, mm -hmm. yellow veggies, lots of whole grain, quinoa, etc., casseroles, chilies. Okay, um, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> you know, here. Uh, and uh, lots of fruit for dessert. If you're eating that kind of diet... For so just grains, grains, cooked grains, vegetables on top of a grain, some fruit. For most people, that's all you need to do. There is no advantage to, to keeping the fat so low that you're afraid. Oh, there's a sunflower seed there. Get off. Yeah. Yeah. By default, you're keeping the fat low because plants do not contain fat. Why don't they understand this? Plants do not have fat. They contain oils. It's not the same. It takes the joy out of eating. Eating should be a... It should be a nourishing activity on every level. It should not be an anxiety-producing event. If you are anxious about your nutrients, there, there's something not right in your approach to your overall diet. Yeah. Now, that said... Uh, yes, I do agree. You shouldn't be stressed out about nutrients. If you would eat enough animal foods, you wouldn't be. As a vegan, though, you have to be. First thing's missing, B12. Then you start researching and you find yourself in your garden interviewing Dr. Klepper and asking about omega-3s, DHA, EPA, vitamin D3 and whatnot. Yes, because you have to stress out about micros, you do not have them on your diet. As I, as I prefaced it, if you're a normal healthy person without any serious disease. Now, if you are one of Dr. Esselstyn's patients whose arteries are so clogged up, yeah. with atherosclerotic plaque and you get angina walking half a block and you have to take a knife if you're in that state yeah you probably shouldn't be eating lots of avocados right. and, and nuts etc I, I grant that and so that's why he's very low fat but once those plaques dissolve away i don't think uh, fat intake is, needs to be curtailed as severely 
I don't think there's any advantage. Uh, the blind leading the blind. Against the ketogenic diet. So ketosis is a helpful state to be in for a few days, a week, a short term. Mm -hmm. But to stay mm -hmm. in ketosis week after week, month after month, and think that that's healthy and normal, uh, I think is a, is a grave error. I think that's going to lead to lots of health problems. So we can talk about it if you want to. But, um, but uh, What health problems? Just name the health problems then. I haven't heard of any health problems of people in ketosis. There's no advantage to a vegan keto diet. Um, no, there isn't. You're right. People who are basically healthy should eat the whole food plant-based diet that I mentioned. And your body will know what to do with it. The yeah, and your body will get sick after a while and you won't be healthy any longer and you drop up the diet. It's all fed folks uh, writing books, mm -hmm. selling supplements, scaring people. Ah, and you're not but selling anything, food, huh? Eat whole plant food. And, 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 uh, in enough quantities, prepare it properly, chew it well, and your body will be fine. Uh, you mentioned chew it well, yeah, of course, because you have to chew it well to get something out of those plants. It's always the same. Honestly, guys, I hate to chew. I just gulp down on raw meat, and I love it, right? Because I do not have to chew. Plants, on the other hand, you have to chew meticulously to extract a little bit of nutrition out of it. Sclerotic plaque. And what I is that? To say, like, I, was, I was listening to a talk of yours on the way here, and um, I, you know, I've seen the pictures of the you know, artery sort of a window cut in or cut open or whatever, uh, and them pulling it out or, or showing it. And you know, I thought that would be a really, really isolated case. Um, but the way that you that you mentioned it, it was sort of like you just saw this be, you know, you saw it happening all the time, and and actually like physically pulling out a chunk of of plaque out of someone's arteries. This is actually happening. That's the disease, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It kills every other person on this campus. Yes. Wow. And what leads to I that? What, we're what leads to this? Is it animal fats, or is it plant oils? Is it sugars? What exactly leads to that? Why do you want to blame the meat on this? Yeah. The pipes are getting carved up from, from too much uh, wow. accident. Yeah, you mentioned that you had sort of a, a, a light bulb moment where you thought, hey, this looks a lot like chicken fat. <laughs> and a little voice on my shoulder. Yeah. Said, it's a good reason why it looks like chicken fat, doctor. Yeah. My <laughs> it is chicken fat. Exactly. And, fat and, pig fat and all the other fat things people are eating. Yeah, sure. Uh, so you mentioned uh, it might be beneficial to be in a ketogenic for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And yes. I'm guessing you're referencing sort of fasting yeah. uh, and water fasting. I know this mm -hmm. is a, a good part of your practice mm -hmm. when you're helping people. Um, and we know, you know that it should uh, extended water fast should always be done with professional help. Extended more than five days. More than five days. If you're helping. Um, is there any sort, you know, should should the average person like me or, you know, or Crystal or whatever uh, be practicing any type of fasting, you know, for our health uh, outside of that, any sort of intermittent fasting or just, you know, not eating for extended periods of time, lower calorie days? What are your thoughts on that? Yes, I believe there's good benefit in uh, refraining from food, uh, staying in the constantly fed state. And that's, that's a thing, the constantly fed state. Um, it means you're running around, walking around high insulin levels. Uh, which can spawn inf inflammation. You have um, a particular type of uh, gut flora, different fats in your blood. It's a good idea yeah, to kind of reproduce what our ancient foraging ancestors a million years ago on the African savanna. You know, you could con can see that you know there might be frequent times when four or five days would go by before you found that next berry bush with fruit on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the next one. Our ancestors in Africa, they were looking for the berry bush. They were looking for the berry bushes. <laughs> oh, Jesus, this is too good to be true. This man is mentally ill. This is vegan deterioration at its finest. He believed that our ancestors in the African savanna were fasting because they were foraging for berry bushes. <laughs> Do it. I agree. Those people probably were fasting right by default because they couldn't catch a new animal every single day. It makes sense, of course. However, <laughs> that you believe that they were looking for berry bushes as their primary fuel source just shows how mentally ill this gentleman is. State to be in 
And during that time, the body takes advantage of it. It, it looks for calories to burn. It oh my God! Out cellular debris um, and throwing it into the metabolic furnace. It's a phenomenon that's called the autophagy. Yep. Um, and uh, uh, inflammation subsides. Uh, it, it's a it's a beneficial state to be in every so often. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like say once a month, uh, people do three days, four or five days on water. I think it's a lovely thing to do. Or just as you mentioned, delay your breakfast. Uh, take that nighttime fasting period that you've been in and extend it. It's a lovely thing to do. The only reason why you have to fast is because you're poisoning yourself with plant chemicals and then you feel better once you're fasting if you however would eat animal foods on a daily basis and you would cut out those plant foods you will feel great and you wouldn't feel the need to fast that much all through the morning hours through a good 18 hours of uh, water only and uh, and that is uh, exerts beneficial effects on the body as well right. we're just learning about these but mm -hmm. uh, we eat too much too often so we, and eating has become a recreational activity yeah. Uh, and uh, we should honor it by eating when we're hungry and, and enjoying those times when we're not eating. Uh, good repair and regeneration is happening in our body in those times. Really cool. Fantastic. Uh, do you think that these are any better, these bean and lentil pastas? The Marginally, sure. Yeah, I think they're a lovely product. And I think they're better than the old white flour uh, pasta you get at the Italian restaurant. Um, you know, you, you don't eat them three times a day, mm -hmm. uh, but by and large, if you're going to be making a pasta dish, oh, I think these are lovely. They, as you mentioned, very low glycemic index. Uh, they carry a good protein wallop. And, uh, I so the low glycemic index does play a role, right? What does that mean? Less insulin secretion. Hmm. How do I get less insulin secretion? By not eating carbohydrates. How can I maintain? How can I sustain myself by not eating carbohydrates? Hmm. Maybe by eating animal foods. Yeah, vegan logic. It's beneficial, so I'm, I'm a fan of those. That's Sweet. Good. Yes. Nice, yeah. We like, we like them. There's all sorts of, like, it's really neat with all the stuff it's that's coming wonderful. out. It's great. I mean, it's good and bad, right? Yeah, it's fantastic, it's, yeah. Like, we're, we're talking about processed food. There's processed yeah. foods, and then there's minimally, yes. you know, just... Touched up, uh, the, <laughs> touched up I like yeah, sure. The, the just so touched up, a, like our B12 injections. Just a little touched up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like our DHA EPA no, capsules. I, I just eat them slightly touched up. Uh, yeah, mm, yeah. I think making pasta out of lentils is minimal process. Yeah, I think it's fine. Cool. Mm. Um, Super cool. So I often turn to people like yourself, like Dr. Greger, like Dr. Neil Barnard, Dean Ornish. Sure. Uh, the gods, for the gods of veganism. For motivation. Uh, and I can't imagine where, you know, people such as yourself turn uh, to, oh. to uh, you know, for motivation, for guidance, for, for any inspiration. Sure. I turn to the natural Can't imagine world. where this God world. gets this information, his inspiration decades. from. And what is the truth of this? Well, I, I look at the athletes. I look mm -hmm. at the healthy, healthy people. Mm -hmm. and, and see, what is the truth of that body? What have they been eating? How have they been conducting their lives? And it's usually very evident. Uh, you're a good example of, uh, of not only health, but uh, how, how you can take fitness uh, to, to the max. And, and if we really got into your diet, you, we'd see that we have whole foods. High in protein. High in protein. of a lot of processed junk in there. And, you know, and that's just the truth of it. And then when I need scientific... So wait a second. After looking at athletes, you come to the conclusion that a vegan diet is the way to go? Is that what I just heard? Really? Sports nutrition is a field that we've been exploring for quite some time now. The sport of bodybuilding, on the other hand, is around about 120 years old. We saw what works. To this very day, those men and women eat around about a kilo to two kilograms of meat. The athletes nowadays that do choose to adapt a vegan diet fail because they suffer from injury after injury and lack of gains. So therefore, if you make the argument you look at athletes to understand what is true, how can you recommend a vegan diet? Validation, God bless Dr. Michael Greger. Um, uh, I'll look up one of his videos and I go right to his reference section and, uh, and see exactly... The master of cherry picking. He does it for us. Bless him. Original studies. So I do a lot of back uh, field research on, um, on, on these various topics. And um, I have to uh, pay homage to Dr. Barnard and Dr. Ornish, mm. who've uh, had the courage to lead the way. And Ornish died, wasn't uh, vegan, uh, on that note. Those are my, uh, Who cares? Uh, those are my uh, human mentors. But uh, I think it was Dr. Roger Bacon long ago said, Oh, physician, the human mentors. Health and healing, 
go walk in the green world, and there you will find the truths you need to learn. And, uh, and I'm a big fan of walking in the forest and just listening. And, uh, and this man is the perfect example of absolute delusion. So he looks at athletes, comes to the conclusion, hmm, must be the vegan diet. He goes into nature and decides we have to eat greens. Okay, the next time you go to one of your forest walks, Dr. Clapper, ask yourself, where is the spinach? Where is the tropical fruit? Where are the beans? Where are the grains? Where is something edible in this forest? Sitting by a creek and listening to my own body and, and watching healthy people and a lot of truth in there. <laughs> That's really cool. So with my audience and you know my channel, I get a lot of people that are sort of new to the vegan diet, new to a plant-based diet, and some people, you know, they sort of just dabble in it, uh, but they'll still have eggs for breakfast, or they will still have, uh, you know, they'll, uh, occasionally they'll still have a bit of meat here and there, or whatever. They just can't give up cheese or whatnot. Um, do you have any any sort of advice or encouragement, you know, to help push those people just that extra little bit, or or maybe even why they should or shouldn't? I don't know. Good question. Why should they? So this, of course, is why you and I are doing this interview. It's the quandary that, that all of us in the plant-based world are facing as the ice caps are melting and we see the destruction that <laughs> large-scale production of animal flesh is costing us. Sure. Uh, After all that great information that you just gave me, now I'm going to believe you that it is the cow farts that causes global warming. Absolutely. <laughs> the plea is, uh, we are being told by sure. every level individual health, um, the, the massive slaughter of animals and the destruction of the planet, the lights are flashing, adopt a plant-based diet. If you want to be healthy as individuals, No, not at all. It actually says adopt a carnivorous diet, right? Adopt new grazing techniques, regenerative agriculture, so on and so forth. That would be a good idea for the planet. Not monocultures, right? Not habitat destruction through plant crops. As a species, it's time to adopt a plant-based diet. But as no, it's not. In that question, how do you get people to do that? Mm -hmm. And because they love their cheese and they yeah. love their, then, you know, I love my steak. So um, yep. I'm a complete practice. I do. Man, whatever works, I'm all for it. And uh, if someone, uh, the, the reducitarians, if they can reduce their meat eating down to once a week, wonderful. That sure beats three times a day. I'll yeah. take that uh, at this point. Um, and enter these amazing new meat analogs, the Impossible Burgers and all that stuff. And no one's saying they're the bastion of health. They are full of no. protein powder and, and oils. And so I know that. Okay, thank you. But, uh, but that nutritional deficit, I feel, is uh, far outweighed by the benefit. One, on health, there's no cholesterol. And, 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 you know, <laughs> It's unbelievable. You know, once you make it out of the vegan bubble, you're really wondering how can they still believe those old foundings, right? Ansel Keys and whatnot. They're still in that old mindset of cholesterol causes heart disease. Super one dimensional. This field just has not evolved at all in their minds. It's insane. The toxins and the antibiotics, all the stuff inherent in meat in these plant based burgers. But the fact that it came from plants, no animals were slaughtered, no rainforest <laughs> were cut down. There. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, just play the emotional card, doesn't matter that in fact, those products are nothing but products. That is not food. You're comparing animal food, let's say a grass-fed burger, to this beyond soy pea slop. Absolutely disgusting. Those two cannot compete. One is food, the other one is not. I'm all for these, but if it helps Joe Macho Man get off his Macho Man onto these puzzles, <laughs> I'm all for it. And uh, they're transition foods. No one's saying you should eat them three times yeah. a day. This is a once a week treat. Just to, just to, uh, you shouldn't them. eat them I'm ever. I'm a big fan of these transition foods. I'm a big fan of reducing the meat, whatever it takes to get people moving down that plant based continuum. Yeah. I'm all for it. Why? And, um, and so Why do you want sick people? I'm concerned with the high blood pressure, diabetes. You want to get rid of your diabetes, you want to get rid of your, your high blood pressure, whole food plant based diet. But if, you got, if they've got kids, they've got grandkids, you, you want a liv livable world for them, then adopt a plant based diet. Whatever, whatever <laughs> port is open. Sure, veganism for the environment, right? Just destroy 
all biodiversity by mono cultures and GMO crops. This is how we will save the world. Open for them to hear. That's what I'll be out loudly through, and uh, and hopefully, I mean, the ice caps are melting. We've run out of time at this. Point. You're repeating yourself. Move to this plant-based evolution. So uh, evolution. <laughs> yeah. Plant-based uh, evolution. As a physician, I've Bright been, green future. Really loudly, but as someone who loves this planet, who loves the animals, um, I'll say for all those reasons. Mm -hmm. plants and get on with it. Amazing. Cool. Well, I think that... You certainly do not love the human animal, if you will, because you do not care what our species-specific diet is. You do not care that we are not herbivores and we cannot digest plants. Remember, insoluble fiber. Insoluble fiber. You know, it covers everything that I wanted to talk about today. I mean, we could talk for hours, but... You are a wealth of knowledge and you have a lot of your knowledge online, so people can definitely find tons of your videos and your talks and everything out there. All right, enough. So, guys, this is it. This video is long enough. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. All the links are in the description box below. As I said, if you want to further support this channel, click on subscribe star and join the team today other than that we have amazon links as well you can go through our portal buy whatever you might want to buy and it doesn't cost you anything extra if you want to have grass-fed beef shipped to your doorstep butcher box is for you and if you're battling any type of ailment be it depression be it sleep issues autoimmune disorders or whatnot make sure to check out the cbd links in the description box as well but this is it guys let me know in the comment section if you like this new format as i said thanks to you we were able to upgrade this channel with a little webcam here with the obs studio that runs on my new ssd which you guys funded through our super chats it is much easier to record videos like this it saves me a lot of time in editing so if you like this format please let me know in the comments and i will do more of this kind all right but this is it for today as always much love and peace